Mark, Mark, what does it mean to you to be a thousand yard rusher, especially a school like this that had so many times? Uh, I mean, it's a good honor and everything. I just know I just got to keep pushing it and just keep getting better, just trying to achieve more goals and everything. Mario, you, as Chip mentioned, you're over a thousand yards in just nine games. The last guy at UNC to do that faster was Gio Bernard in 2012. Do you, mm -hmm. Is he someone you remember watching in college or in the pros, Giovanni Bernard? Yeah, yeah, I remember watching him. Yeah, yeah. He was a real good player. What does it mean to be in his company here where he's a bit of a local legend, really? It's really amazing, just, just being able to just compare myself like, to some of the top players and everything. So, yeah. It's a good for him. Can you take us through that 54-yard touchdown run? Just kind of, you got the ball. I, Looked like the hole was pretty big. How big was it, and what did you see, and what did you realize you were gonna go and touch? Yeah, really, just the O line, just they did their thing all day, and then they just opened up the hole, and they just put me one on one with the safety, and they put if they put me one on one with the safety, it's my job to make a mess. So. How about the four yard touchdown on the middle, like a run scrub? Yeah, that was that was my O line too. I really just got got like four or five yards, and then got stood up. And then O-line helped me push through the foul and everything. You just feel like you picked up a carry in there? <laughs> yeah, kind of like that, yeah. Part of that had to be you, though, because there were at least five Campbell players that made pretty solid contact with you on that play. So yeah, some yeah. of it has to be you. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm what is it about you that got in, too? Really just keeping my feet moving and then not stopping until I hear Wilson, really. How'd it feel to get a breather? For the first time, it's felt like in a while. It seems like you play, you know, pretty much throughout the whole game and getting almost 30 carries, I guess. What was it like to just kind of fourth quarter, sit back, relax, kind of take some stuff off your legs kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, it felt good. It felt good because all the players got to play and everything. We got to see some young guys play and everything. So, I mean, it felt really good. Morgan, it's, it's four straight 100-yard games for you. Like, in high school, I know those numbers were, were kind of commonplace for you. Like, I mean, what – what kind of run did you go on in high school? It, it was pretty much every game a 100-yard game. What, what were those numbers that you remember from there? Uh, high school, I don't, I don't even remember my numbers in high school. Last okay, yeah. we'll look at them. Lots, <laughs> lots, yeah, lots like of lots straight 200-yard game. Or something. Mario, uh, what was it like seeing Connor Harrell get in there at the end of the game? Uh, you guys came into you and see at the same time. What was it like watching him uh, play in that game? Uh, it was just real exciting to see him make that uh, – Made that long run and everything, and then him being able to show his talent for real. Because I feel like he got like a real good talent. And then, so I feel like he's going to be really good for us next year and everything. How much did you work on ball security this offseason? Obviously, last year it seemed like some of the issues and the reasons why you got benched were some of the fumbles you had. And this mm -hmm. year, I think you leave the country and rushes without a fumble so far. I guess what was kind of that emphasis like for you during the offseason, and how has that kind of played out this season? Uh, really just taking a big look on it and then trying to lock in on it to make sure that's uh, the number one priority is to take care of the ball because that's the most important thing. Did you change anything in terms of how you held the ball or anything mechanically that you saw from last year that you needed to fix going into this season? Uh, really just, you just got to be more aware of it, just kind of the thing. So it's, I mean, like, just always make sure you take care of the ball no matter what. You guys good with that? Mario, what, have you done anything different or extra in terms of trying to preserve your body with all the carries that you've gotten this season and recently? I mean, has there been more cold tub stuff? Like, what are you doing during the week to try to, like, heal and recover and, and, and you know, be able to stay the course with this thing? Yeah, making sure I'm just in the cold tub every day, hot tub every day, just getting in the training room all day, just getting recovery and everything so I can be the best player I can be Saturday. Is that is that a daily thing, or is there a certain day that you focus on that more than others? I mean, no, I try to make it daily, really. Just try to get in there every day I can. How long are you in there? Uh, probably like fifteen to twenty minutes in the cold tub, and then getting hot tub fifteen minutes. Yeah. I think you said Wednesday when we talked to you that sometimes the soreness you don't get rid of the soreness until about Friday. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's really just Sunday I'm a little sore, and then throughout the week I'm just in the treatment room and everything, just getting rehab and everything. So. All right. Thanks, Amari. Thanks. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Last week, how, how did, between then and, and I guess Max said it was almost game time, before you told him about good to go. Just, what was that week like for you? Um, it was all right. I mean, I was in the training room all week. Um, 
they were doing everything they could to make sure I was good. Told them about like about Thursday that my head was fine. It was just my ankle, really. So I, mean, I was I was good the whole week. Really. How scary was it on the field? And on top, in addition to that, you go from that moment, it was about eight or nine minutes when you're laying out there, you got teammates praying for you, to today where you're catching a couple of touchdown passes. Um, I mean, it was a little scary, but then, you know, he got in the hospital, told David, it's part of the game, he got a clean shot on me. You know, I knew I was going to be all right when I opened my eyes. So, yeah, I knew I was, I knew I was fine. Was have, you watched, have, you watched, have you watched the play? I did. Mm. What'd you think about it? Because you didn't see the guy coming, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, turn, look to my right, and then before I can even look to the left, he got me. And I said, it was a clean play. He made a big play for his first team. Tez, did you open? You said when you opened your eyes. Like, when did you open your eyes? I said, I don't know. I took my helmet off. Next thing you know, it was, I was looking up that loop. I don't even remember what happened this morning. Okay, so on the field, though. Yeah. Was the ankle you mentioned, was that? A part of the play. Mm-hmm. The when I was looking at the video, like I was, I got in the hospital. I was wondering if my ankle was hurt. And I looked at the video; he kind of rolled up on my ankle as well. They so. said you didn't sleep all night at the hospital. Was it because of the pain or what? No, nah, I just, you know, I was just up all night. I ain't, I wouldn't, didn't really go to sleep. Obviously, Max said you gave him the okay like two minutes or what he said two minutes kind of before kickoff. Did you have a feeling though throughout the week that you would probably be ready to play, or was it really that last minute for you as well? Like my ankle was bothering me real bad all week. Like I tried to push off of a release, like it was hurting. So I mean, took a couple minutes, got taped up. I was fine and warm up in pregame. So. How much did you Why guys need to play much? today? Like this was one, like you're saying, you're coming off <coughs> the huge hit. You got the ankle thing. Like you could sit this thing out and rest, get ready for the final three games. Like why did you want to play? Yeah, I'm, I'm not you know, too big on sitting out. Like, if I can play, like, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to go full speed. So, I mean, sitting out, I mean, it's that soft to me, really trying to milk, like, players around, trying to milk stuff, or, like, trying not to play on purpose to save themselves. And I'm just like, I mean, if I can go, I can go. Did you guys, as a team, need this? Did you need to <clears throat> have a game where all the positive m- m- morale and mojo kind of went your way? I'm sorry. Did, were, did you guys, as a team, need a game like this? Some people say you shouldn't play an FCS team this time of year, but now that the game is in the box, did you guys kind of need to have this feel-good morale type game given the previous couple of weeks? Yeah, I feel like we did coming off two hard fall, two hard fall losses. Um, I feel like we needed a game like this to get some confidence back, especially with who we got next week and do you know they come in fire hard. So we need a game to you know, give us some momentum back. Tez, with Chris Culver catching that long touchdown late in the fourth quarter, is I mean, that seems like a route that you could have easily run if it was earlier in the game. Does he remind you of a younger you at all? Uh, it does. Coach is telling me out of time as well. But um, he's, he's going to be real special. I saw that when he came in. He ran his first non-ball in camp. Um, he's a real good player, and I'm very proud of him for that. How have you seen Culver kind of come along in practice? I know you mentioned kind of seeing him in camp. But I guess just how, you know, the way that the season's progressed, Mac even said that, you know, He's somebody that they kind of need to rely on a little bit more today. How have you seen him progress behind the scenes? Yeah, I mean, he comes to come to practice. He's working every day. You know, Galloway's on him. Um, T. Scott's on him. Um, he just he continues to go every day. Like, the, that route, the, those go routes, like, he reps those all day, every day. So, we knew it was going to come for him at some point. What kind of advice do you give a player like him? Obviously, he's a you know, young guy. He's been around the block. But what's some of the, some of the pieces of advice that you kind of give us stuff? Um, I just tell them, like, listen, you know, take the coach. And I was one of the players who always who wanted to be coach, you know, so I just tell them, like, go Galloway, T, telling them something, like, just take it all in, like, and just tell them his time's going to come, like, which it did. He probably didn't expect it to come. But I always tell them, like, stay ready because it's, it's coming. Doc Chapman had a, last three games, had a big catch against Virginia, had the kickoff return <laughs> catch last week. He had a 45 yarder today. Is that something you guys kind of see more and more from him in the last month, six weeks or so in practice, mm-hmm. that he's starting to translate that to the field? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely did. It started with him back in the spring. You know, he's, he's put in a lot of work to be be a better version of himself. So to see him come out and make big plays, game in, game out, it's, it's, it's real special for him. Ted, were you, were you surprised on the second touchdown with how open you were? Um, I, actually, I was. Cause my path that I was taking, I looked and see the ball there. I'm like, why are you throwing it out? Well, I guess I'm open. And I started to catch it. So that was really on Drake through me, threw me open. So that, that play was all on him. Did you all confuse them? It seemed like they had a bunch of 
civil bus in coverage. You know what I mean? Like, these, was there con some confusion that you all created for them, do you think? Um, I, feel, I feel like it was. I mean, they probably expected some different things that we usually do. And we, you know, make some adjustments in game. The director is making a lot of checks at the line as well, so they probably was expecting something. And we end up running something different. That probably threw them off. All right. That's this. Thank you. Everyone expecting you guys to win against the team hockey game. Right? Did you feel like you guys are back on track now, especially defensively? You get everything out of it that you want? Yeah, I mean, I think that we did everything that we were supposed to do today. Uh, playing against Campbell, a little bit lesser opponent. Um, and, and we handled business like we should have. So definitely proud of, of us getting back on track and, and handling business today. So did you, what, did you, what did you guys focus on? Especially in regaining confidence. Yeah, yeah, definitely getting some confidence back today. What did you guys focus on this week in preparation for this game? Yeah, I mean, just getting back to watching film, understanding what they're trying to run as a defense, I mean, as an offense. Um, I, like I you know, mentioned before earlier in the week, uh, tempo has been a problem for us. We knew that that is something that they were going to try to attack. Um, and I think we handled that pretty well today. We were able to get the calls in faster. Everybody was expecting tempo, so we got lined up faster. Um, so really think we did a good job of executing that today. Can you take me inside the throne room and practice defensively this week? Who stood up? What was said? You know, after Georgia Tech and then coming into today against Campbell? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, last Sunday, uh, Coach Chiz had a, had a great speech to the defense. Um, you know, he, he, he got after us and, and, and made us understood um, the different things and, and the reasons why uh, we kind of lost that game. But it was very uplifting at the same time. Um, just telling us that we're going to get back on track, we're going to figure it out, point at the things out. Um, but not only that, he actually had every defensive coach uh, step up um, and just kind of talk to us and just kind of give us, you know, whatever they had to say. Um, and I think that really kind of, you know, gave us some confidence and, and really settled us down as a defense, kind of preparing for the week. Is that kind of motivational kind of speeches or really X and O kind of things or just motivational? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the one I'm referring to was more of a motivational one, um, just kind of talking about, you know, what happened um, from an emotional standpoint and, and different things like that and, and how we just got to keep going and, and keeping our heads up and telling us we have everything still in front of us, our goal still in front of us. So it was a very motivating type speech. Cedric, on one of his early drives came out, it seemed like you got kicked away frustrated. I can't remember what play it was, but kind of pointing to your head and referencing maybe one of the quarterback runs or something like that. Did you feel like early on some of those miscommunication errors you guys had had these past two weeks kind of crept back? And did you feel like those kind of went away as the remainder of the game went on and you shut them out? What kind of changed, I guess, during that time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we kind of had a little bit of a moment um, on that drive, which is kind of why they were able to kind of get that long run. Um, so I was just kind of, you know, trying to encourage the guys on the sideline, you know, get the call in quicker different things like that. But like I said, we, we handled tempo very well today, very well. They were trying to do it as well, and we were able to stop it. So I'm proud of the way that we handled it throughout the day. Oh, they, they, they were moving it a little bit there for a while. What was the difference in you guys just shutting it down? Because once you did, everything kind of opened up for you defensively. You guys started picking up sacks. There were a lot more uh, tight, more PBUs, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I think – one of the, the big things that you kind of talk about as a defense, if you stop a certain play, <clears throat> stop a certain strategy, it will tend to go away. Um, you know, they'll, they'll stop trying to do it. And I think that's kind of what happened today. Um, early on in the game, they were trying to tempo. And like I said, this is something that we put big emphasis on. And I think it really got across to us this week. We were lining up fast. The call was getting in quick. And I think that was just part of the problem of why tempo was working before. We weren't lined up. We were confused on what our job was. Today we were confused, and we were able to stop it. And as the game went on, they stopped going tempo. So, is it good for you guys that you get, that they came out and tried to do, replicate what Georgia Tech did, so you have a live, firsthand opportunity to fix what didn't go right last yes, week? Yes, yes, I, I definitely think we appreciate it. You know, them coming out and, and working the tempo against us, and for us to be able to handle it well. Um, in a game like this and, and kind of moving forward throughout the rest of the season because teams are, teams are still going to try it. Just because we stopped it, you know, versus Campbell doesn't mean they're not going to stop trying it. So we got to be prepared for it for the rest of the season. Seth, we saw a lot more. Go ahead. Yeah, we saw a lot more of uh, Mari Campbell and Sebastian Cheeks today. 
what's kind of the next step for them as you know players like you depart, uh, kind of taking that reign and, and, and you know kind of being I guess a more prominent part of that uh, linebacker room moving forward into the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean they're, they're, they're the next guys up. You know, obviously I'm I'm planning on leaving after this year. I don't know what you know Powers' plans are. Uh, but those guys have got to step up, and I, I want to give a huge shout out to Amari Campbell. Um, since he's been here, he is, he's been great for us. He's done all the right things. He's been improving and just an overall great player. And I'm calling it right now. Y'all are going to see big things from him for years to come. Uh, proud of Sebastian Cheeks. You know, he's had injuries, had to deal with things, and he went in there today and handled himself very well today. Uh, so I'm proud of the young boys and, and proud of them and continue to see their growth. Exactly. What about, um, just real quick, because you mentioned uh, uh, Campbell, what about his game kind of sticks out to you? I know that that's somebody you kind of, uh, you know, helped develop and things like that. But what about, what does he do well out there on the field too? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he just does a little bit of everything well. I think one of the biggest things is that he understands football and, and understands what we're trying to do as a defense. He's a smart kid. He's a physical player. He'll go hit you. He can cover. He, he can do it all, like I said. The more that he develops, the more that he gets filled and gets reps, he's going to be a great player for USC. Next, the most important thing for this defense is stopping the run. How would you rate y'all's performance in that today? Yeah, I mean, uh, other than the, the, the long uh, QB run, um, I, I feel like we did a pretty good job today of stopping the run. And it wasn't much yardage that they were getting today. So I think we handled that well today. What were those conversations like throughout the week talking about getting calls in quicker? Is that a conversation you have with you know Gene from his perspective up in the booth, the guys who are signaling down? I guess what were those conversations like and what differences were made throughout yeah, the week? Yeah, well, I, I think basically what we did, we just kind of had a plan. Okay, here are the three, four plays we're going to run when they go tempo. It's going to be one of these three, four plays, and Chiz is going to relay it to the signalers quick. And not only that, but like I said, we talked about getting lined up fast and expecting tempo. And I think we did, got up, lined up fast, expecting it. Everybody's were getting to their spots, getting there. We got the call in, and we were able to line up and handle it. You're talking about three or four plays. Is that something that wasn't necessarily put in place like before this week? Did you have maybe more options, and was that kind of creating something for people? Yeah, I, I don't think we we um, kind of put a big emphasis. Okay, these are going to be the three, four plays we're going to run versus tempo. And I think when we did that this week, it was it was able to help us out. How well, big were the punters? Go ahead. Thank you, Chipper. How big were the punter's eyes when you were bearing down? <laughs> I mean, it looked like he was surveying and like. You I know. mean, in all honesty, my eyes got big because I was expecting him to, you know, punt it, and then I seen him dropping back for a pass. So I'm like, all right, just like, <laughs> you know, like so. I mean, I, I really wasn't even looking at his eyes. I was just like, why is he not punting the ball? <laughs> so, Chad, I was going to ask you, going like that at Sunday meeting, was that the first time Coach Chiz was? Um, yeah, I think it was the first time that he brought assistant coaches up um, to kind of speak to us. I, I don't remember another time he really did that after a loss. Um, but I think, like I said, his just overall message and, and just letting everybody speak, I just felt like it was very uplifting and a message that just kind of brought everybody together as a defense. Would you speak to any of the players? Or no, none of the players. Coaches, players, yeah, we're just coaches. In so those punch situations, are you, are you always on alert for a possible fake, or there's some tendencies that you guys know in advance they're going to be given? And you, you said you're totally surprised that they actually did. Yeah, situation. I mean, I'm, I'm always, you know, on alert for punt, but you know, the particular, uh, you know, punt return play we had, and it was, you know, kind of a block. We were trying to get after them, um, so obviously I was rushing and, and, and trying to block the punt. And like I said, he, he just had the ball back to him. You know, usually on our, you know, punts that we're just trying to hold them up, that's when I'm, you know, kind of the guy who's watching for the fakes and different things like that. Um, but it, it was a play call where I was, you know, called upon to go block the punt, so that's what I was trying to do. It looked like you guys went after it a couple of times, taking more maybe than usual. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually something that, you know, we actually talked about, um, you know, the past few weeks is, is – is, trying to block kicks because I think for the first six games we didn't try to block kick at all. It was all hold up. Um, so that was definitely something that we've been trying to do for the past two weeks. All right.